were the Happy Camper Wives. And here we are in Alaska. Today we're going to go snag fishing and try to catch some salmon. But first we're going to show you how. There are a few pieces of gear you're going to want to have when you are snag fishing. First of all, you're going to want a good pole. So you want a pole that can have a really good snag. Ugly sticks work pretty well if you get a shorter one. Ours is a little too long for snagging. Then we just got this cheap bruiser that works really, really well because it's a stiff pole. And if you break it, it's not that expensive. So it works great for snagging. You're gonna need around a size eight snag hook because I mean, they have six or tens will work. Six is a little too light for us, but 10 is a little too heavy. We really like the eights. You're gonna want a pair of wool socks because even with waders, it still gets a little cold out there. And if you get any water in your boots, it's gonna keep you warm. And then a hat. Make sure you stay warm out there. It is Alaska after all. You're going to want a knife. You need to kill your fish right away after you catch it to respect the animal and also make sure that you alleviate as much suffering as possible. You need a stringer. Make sure that you are able to carry your fish and also uh, keep them cold while you're fishing. You're gonna want a good pair of waders. A lot of people have the full waders, but these are a little less expensive and it, 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 they work for us as long as you're not going in too deep of water. So get a pair of waders. It's essential in Alaska. Also recommend a pair of sunglasses. We heard that polarized sunglasses, you can actually see through the water to see the fish better. So we got a pair. You're also gonna need some plastic bags for all the fish you're gonna catch. It's time to get ready to head out. In the Kenai Peninsula, you're allowed to snag fish in brackish salt water. So sometimes you have to hike out pretty far to get the incoming tide. Hey Val, why's your butt all wet? Well, it turns out we left our bag in the rain all night. So it doesn't. I didn't pee. I didn't pee, I swear. And if you're really rugged, you need to pee. <laughs> Go in the woods. At least you don't have to worry about peeing on your shoes. There are five different types of salmon, and where you can fish them, how many you are allowed to fish, and what type you're allowed to fish depends completely on local regulations. So make sure you check your regulations before you start fishing. Always, always, always check your regulations. Always, always, always have a fishing license. Always, always, always dance while you're fishing. So for tying the knot, this one, the old line got busted. You wanna go through, this is just how we've learned probably other ways. Go through and then wrap it around like six times. Some people will do this like just twist it, but I'm not that coordinated. All right, once you've gone around six, five or six times, then go back through the hole at the bottom, like so, and then pull through. So same fishing is different than regular fishing because you're not actually waiting for the fish to bite at your hook or a bobber or any other traditional form of fishing. This way, you actually wait for the fish to come by and you pull your hook into the fish and then pull the fish out of the water. Each person uses a different type of technique when snag fishing, and these are a few of our favorites. One technique is to cast it across the river or into the ocean and then give it a few hard pulls as you reel it in. Another technique is to use a set amount of line, throw it into the river, wait two seconds for it to drop to the bottom, and then snag it across. One thing you want to look for is deep water. Salmon will swim upstream in the deepest channels. They will not go in shallow channels. So sometimes snag hooks hit the bottom so many times they bend inward. So I'll show you how you can move it out. So yeah, all you want to do is make sure you bring a set of pliers, uh, and then if the hook bends in, just bend it back out again. It's called the fish dance. When you snag a fish, just back it on the shore. Don't reel it in. This way you're more likely to not lose the fish in the process. So we just got a fish. And you want to cut the gills. Make sure you bleed it out. 
so that in case it is still alive, get it going, then you string it up. All right, you want to have your fish so that it stays cool and it doesn't accidentally float down the stream. So what we take this is, is our, our fish stringer. We go through his gills once, and then we go through this little hook here. We've lost fish before because we only did it once uh, and something went wrong with the string, so I personally like doing it twice just as a safekeeping. There you go. Now it's ready to hook up, either on your belt loop or on the side of the uh, shore with your equipment. And you can now keep it under the water to keep it cool on a hot day. As you can see, this one's a little muddy, but it's actually a very beautiful salmon. Look at those scales. All right. God, we were out for probably, what, five hours? Yeah, it's eight o'clock now. We came eight out. Eight o'clock. Yeah. Eight o'clock in Alaska. Here it is, perfectly sunny. And the fish were coming in pretty good. We couldn't catch all that many, but we got five. Five is not bad. We're gonna have a lot of good food for the next few days. So that's that. So in Alaska, there's a spring sewers. They have these docks that you can play the fish at, and it's so convenient. So you can just, everyone uses the carcasses for halibut fishing, and they actually, this gentleman here is helping. Uh, us play some fish, but we're going to play a few ourselves. And you know, a lot of people do it where they gut the middle and all that, but out here, if you literally just go along and try to miss the fins, it's a lot easier than having to gut it and all that. And then you have this beautiful filet. And a lot of people eat the roe. We don't enjoy it, but it's also really good for trout bait, we hear. We don't keep that either, but we try to give it away to people that want it. And they want it. So you're going to cut right here, underneath the fin and the head, and then you hit the bone, and then you're going to slide it along the rib cage there. And just wake your way down. Go slow at first, and try not to miss any meat. Go right to the end there. And ta-da, you'll have a nice salmon filet. Once you filet it, you want to cut off the ribs here. There's the halibut bait. There's our fish. That'll be feed us for a number of meals. So that's how you catch and clean some good old Alaskan salmon. For ideas on how to cook the salmon, check out happycamperwives.com. It's called the fish dance.